Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know it is a bit of a crazy, crazy time out there, which is why we're sitting in my home office, a little corner of my home office at least, and you can uh, see behind me, I got a little screen set up so we can discuss what is at topic today, but um, it is a different time, so I apologize, I'm recording in here a little different, I might be looking around more, up, down, side, side, at the screen, I don't know, it's going to be just a little different, uh, again, as is everything right now, so I hope everybody's staying safe, I know it's a tough time, I know it's hard to stay inside, I know it's hard to change your whole daily routine your whole life really and it just sucks it really does i i feel for everybody out there so um but let's stay safe as best as we can i guess and let's get through this together and come out uh, even better on the other side so i won't drone on too much about that let's jump into the good news the good news is we may be getting a new ford f-150 it sounds like a 2021 model year and i'm pretty dang excited about that for those of you that uh, are new to the channel or um, you know, not uh, seen anything yet. I do have a 2018 Ford F-150 Limited, but I got some pictures here that I want to go through, courtesy of F-150Gen14.com. So here in this first picture, you can tell that, the, the, I mean, the first thing right off the bat, obviously, is the massive screen. I, I can't tell exactly how big it is, but I'm going to guess that's an, a, at least a 10-inch screen right there. I mean, it, it is massive. It, it's really hard to tell because you can't really grasp um, how big some of the other components are. But just going off like my truck, that is a huge, huge improvement. So very excited about that. Let's move on to something that's kind of interesting. On the side of the screen, you can see that is where the trailer uh, assist is. I, think, I, I don't know the exact term, but to the left of the screen, there's that big knob there. That is carried over from my platform of F-150, and it allows you to take your hand off the steering wheel and essentially reverse uh, you know, reverse your trailer more efficiently, easier. You don't have to confuse, you know, left is right, right is left. It, it's just supposedly a lot more helpful. I have not used it on my truck, but um, they have continued to use it here. But the weird part is that it is really high up, and I'm sure that's for ease of access. You know, it's kind of at um, the level that your steering wheel is, but I just think it looks kind of weird. Going back to the right side of the screen, you can see there's a button there, or at least what I think is a button. I believe it could be what opens the glove box. A lot of manufacturers are using kind of buttons now instead of the old school handle on the glove box. So I'm guessing that's what that could be. But it just looks a little interesting with a full knob um, on the on the left side of the screen and then just kind of a plain Jane button. I don't know. It just doesn't look symmetric to me, but I'm sure, you know, in person it'll look a little bit better. So moving over to the left uh, is the huge center screen for uh, your gauge cluster. And we'll have some more photos of that we'll get to here in a bit. But that is a very interesting uh, gauge cluster. I know some people are going to be kind of upset that there's no analog gauges, but for me, I'm really excited about a full screen up there. I think that it's more configurable and it just looks cooler, more advanced and and, um, more futuristic, which uh, I love. I'm, I'm happy about that. So uh, going over to the steering wheel, it looks like it's a kind of similar steering wheel. The buttons look a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit nicer. The uh, steering wheel still looks very thick, which has always been something I like about uh, my Ford currently. So a nice thick uh, leather wrap steering wheel. Uh, nothing really to talk about too much there, but something I do want to point out is I can you can kind of see the speaker in the driver's side door there and it looks like it has an aluminum cover which is what a lot of higher end trucks are going to uh, i do want to point out and i should have said this before but this is supposedly a lariat version so kind of the upper mid-level of the trucks and so this is not like a limited or platinum or king ranch to what at least what I, i'm gathering from some of the other pictures i've seen so um, it does look like it has like potentially they're sticking with the BNO. I think you can kind of see the BNO logo in the bottom corner there, but uh, or I should say the upper corner of this the speaker. But it does look like it's an aluminum cover, which makes me very happy. I hope they continue to upgrade the sound system. I I love a good sound system. It's something I really enjoy is is music, and I, I hope they continue to push the envelope and, and get some really really high end uh, sound in that truck. Moving on to the second interior picture here is just below the screen for the climate controls and the audio controls. As you can see, it's kind of similar, uh, kind of the you know metal looking dials to the current setup, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more modern looking. I think that uh, you know the having the little screen inside of the temperature uh, changing dials is is kind of 
modern-ish. I'm not sure it would be something that I would really choose to put in there, but it is something different. And so then you have those still very large, and then you have the smaller volume and tuning control knobs and some other radio controls. Something I found interesting, and if you watch one of my videos from uh, two or three videos ago, something uh, uh, some of the things I hate about my F-150 is I pointed out that there is no button for the heated steering wheel. You actually have to go through the screen to find it and, and turn it on there, and that's something I really, really do not like. Well, you can see here on the left side that they did add a button for the heated steering wheel, which is uh, nothing huge, but it is nice to, that uh, I'm sure some other people complained about it and they took it serious and made a change to it. As you can see, heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, um, you know, really all the basic controls for, for your uh, climate controls. So nothing crazy, definitely different, but uh, it still does look nice. Next picture here, we have some more interior stuff, and it is the gear select. A lot of people were worried that they were going to get rid of the, you know, kind of the old school Ford, pull down in the, uh, the center console area, gear selector, and go to like a dial of some sort. I'm happy to report that they're not going to a dial form. They're keeping kind of the F-150 tradition over the last few generations of that uh, center control gear select. There is a couple buttons that are a little interesting. As you can see, there is a button labeled M. Um, in my experience with some other type of higher end, like SUV sports car type stuff, you know, the M obviously always means manual, but I do not see any paddle shifters anywhere on this one. So you would have to choose maybe M for manual and then use the, I'm sure there's probably a button on the side of that gear select for a, pu a plus and minus for gear um, changing. I I'm thinking that's what that could be. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. Now there is another little silver button right above it. And I can't quite make out what it is. It kind of looks like the gear select button itself uh, moving up and down, but I'm not really sure what that is. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, kind of curious though. Interesting to me is you can see on the sides of the gear lever, it kind of is notched out. And to me that almost feels like you're, it's not gonna like free flow down where you can actually pull it and it's going to actually move. This one kind of looks like maybe you just pull it, like kind of bump it and it will just bump one down at a time. I'm not sure if that's the case or if it's just a very short range that the gear select is going to move. Of course, the picture that I was looking forward to seeing most is the blurriest picture. That's just how it goes today. That That is just exactly how things have been going lately. But anyways, this still has a lot of good information that you can kind of, um, you know, finally see if you really can kind of squint through the blurriness here. So let's jump right into it. The uh, first of all, you're going to see that the tack is huge and the speedometer is just as big. And I'm hoping they're... they're you know, switchable, you can put the tack and, and speed uh, on either or side. I'm sure it's configurable and there's going to be a lot of great information there. But uh, to the important information, as you can see, this truck has been driven for 45 miles, uh, 45.7 miles over the course of 50 minutes. So that seems like it's probably pretty close to, you know, 60 miles an hour um, average and, uh, you know, a little bit less. But um, they're getting 21.8 miles per gallon. And so that is, I would say, probably what we should expect out of like an EcoBoost cruising at 60 miles an hour. But what I do find interesting is that the distance to empty, as you can see in the right corner, bottom right corner, or the top right corner, distance to empty is 707. So I'm not sure, you know, if the, if there's any fudging of the numbers here to tease something, if there's a hidden message, I don't know. The other thing we don't know is, is this just an EcoBoost? Is this an EcoBoost with a hybrid powertrain? Is this uh, an all electric powertrain? We don't know. And it's hard to really say, but I will say to me, the most important information off of this picture is 707 distance to empty. I do have the 36 gallon tank on my EcoBoost. I've never seen uh, anything over 630 on distance to empty. Uh, so this that's a huge gain. Um, either a bigger fuel tank or, like I said, they're fudging something. I don't know. Uh, or it's the hybrid side. So while fuel mileage may be, you know, 20 
1.8, maybe we're not seeing that there's some hybrid tech on the back end um, making that distance to empty a little higher. Uh, again, hard to say, but really good information. This picture I'm going to share with you, of course, it's kind of uh, too bright here on the screen, but we're going to blast it up here so you can see a little closer um, on your screen, is some um, paperwork from Ford. And it, you can see that uh, they do have the engines listed, 2.4 or 2.7, uh, 3.3, 3.5, 3.5, 3.0, and a 5.0. Uh, all V6s except for the 5.0 is a V8, but you can see that there is a electric fuel version and a diesel version. So 3.0 liter diesel, I believe that's probably the same one that's already out right now, but uh, most importantly is that uh, 3.5 liter HEV V6 electric Ford F-150, or Ford manufacturer, uh, net brake horsepower to be decided. So I'm guessing that is going to be obviously a 3.5 liter uh, EcoBoost assisted with a electric hybrid setup. And that is what everybody is really interested in finding out. So that is on here on the, you know, the kind of the uh, parts list. And I think that is probably the most important, exciting, uh, confrontational, everything above kind of news that we can possibly get out of this new truck. As you can see, this is an all camoed out uh, truck. It looks like it's probably a higher end model. I would say pretty, just from what I can see on uh, this picture, it kind of looks like it might be a platinum. Reason I say that is just because there's a little bit of chrome on that front strip, but the rest of it is kind of that brushed aluminum that they've been using for a while for the uh, platinum series trucks. And you can also see on the side that there is um, the fold down uh, electric running boards, which is something that is uh, usually only offered on, you know, the Platinums, Limiteds, and King Ranches. And so that is kind of why I'm guessing that's what trim this is going to be. Something that uh, I think is throwing me off is the camo, obviously, and they do that on purpose. And the reason I say that it's really throwing me off is because if you look closely, there is some daytime running lights integrated into the bumper that are going to they're they're really broken up right now and they're broken up because of that camo so it's broken up from the main headlight to that bottom bumper but when the camo's off of it and that's all color matched I really believe that that's going to free flow very well that that whole LED strip is going to flow nicely and it's going to look very very aggressive and it does look like it's a pretty clean truck nothing crazy like the uh i think the chevys are really kind of the craziest like different type looking truck right now this is pretty forward looking um I'm, I'm not mad about it i just i think i hope when the camo comes off i like it a little bit more because i think currently the f-150 headlight in in like my truck is one of the greatest looking headlights on the market right now. I think it's such an aggressive, clean looking headlight with the dual LEDs. And I just talked about that in my last video. So um, this one, I I'm excited to see. I think it's gonna be better without the camo, obviously. And uh, that's at least what we can hope for. Another thing I wanna point out here, it's something that I talked about in the five things I hate about my truck, is that I really love the camera technology, cameras up front, back, side, whatever it is, there's cameras everywhere, but there's no front parking sensors, and that's something that I had in a 2014 model year truck, but not my 2018 model year. And it just never made any sense to me. As you can see here in the pictures, if you look closely, there are some front parking sensors. So uh, two for two for me, I asked for a button for heated steering wheel that is an actual physical button and I asked for front parking sensors and it is, uh, they do have both of those. So that is pretty awesome. Not a lot has changed. The taillights are a, a little bit underwhelming in my opinion. I don't love the clear lamp in it. What makes with the red to me, that kind of looks like a lower end, uh, tail light, but you know, again, this could be early on testing on some of these types of things. So hopefully they make a change on that or it looks better in person. That is one thing I don't love on this one, but uh, not really too much difference here. You can see uh, a little bit of um, a different thing on the roof line. I think on the new F 250s, they have those two black, uh, I don't know if they're antennas, but they're two black, like plastic. Um, caps on uh, the left and right side of the rear of the cab, but you can see um, really pretty similar looking um, back end. Uh, I, I wish there was a little bit more, but unfortunately, I think the camo is kind of taking away from what uh, we're seeing here. Um, there does look 
like there's some more sensors on the bumper and a camera integrated into the third tail light or brake light. So that is a couple differences, but overall nothing too crazy. A little closer picture here in the front end. And again, you can kind of see that dual headlight um, integrating into the bumper type look. So it's got a, uh, a big running light uh, that comes all the way from the um, part of the grill down to the fender and then into the bottom bumper, which is, again, I think it's going to look so much better without this camo on it. Uh, pretty cool looking grill. I'm not, uh, not really you know, loving it or hating it. Hopefully there'll be some different variations of it. Uh, overall, I mean, I like it. Um, I'm just kind of excited to see what, you know, the King Ranch, the Limiteds, the Platinums, Lariats, what all the different grills are gonna look like. And lastly, we can see here a render of the truck with no uh, camo on it. This one comes courtesy of F150gen14.com as well. And these renderings I think are fairly accurate, but uh, I, I'm I'm not loving that solid grill. Hopefully they do something a little better. This kind of looks like a sport package setup. So um, again, not, I, again, these are renderings. I, I think it's going to look a lot better in person. Those spy shots, there's some some things that I really, really like about it and some things that I'm uh, hesitant on but excited to see. So as you can see here in the render, it's got um, pretty dang close spot on to that front end that we're seeing in those spy shots. But uh, the, the running lights are not really prominent here in this picture, and I think that's a big part of it. And then the other thing is that grill is a solid color match grill, and uh, not a huge fan of that. But we'll see what the different options are when this truck actually comes out. Finally, the last picture I bring to you is something very interesting to me, kind of a little quirk I wanted to throw here in at the end, is you can see that there is the full display uh, on, the, on the driver's uh, digital display, it's, show, it's on, you can see the number 26 it appears, and it is running and doing its thing, but yet on the A pillar, there is two gauges, what looks to be an air to fuel ratio gauge and a boost gauge. Obviously for testing, that makes a lot of sense, but it is kind of weird that the, uh, the um, this is a pretty fully functioning looking truck, and they have these really, really interesting gauges on the side here, uh, when you would think that they would just be plugged into like the OBD2 port and have like their computer up if they were really worried about air to fuel and boost gauge, um, or, or boost pressures. But again, what do I know? Uh, it's just kind of something I thought was interesting and I uh, wanted to throw it at you guys. So that's all I have for everybody today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit different than normal, but uh, something I'm really excited about and I can't can't wait to you know continue sharing information that I see and get and you know we'll kind of go through this together and, and hopefully one day we get this truck and it's everything we hoped it was and maybe one can be sitting in the garage uh, outside that'd be great so uh, again I want to say I hope everybody's staying safe staying healthy I know it's tough right now but do your best to stay inside and uh, you know just uh, do your thing uh, the most responsible way you can and uh, we're gonna get through this leave you with that I hope everybody has a fantastic day evening, whenever you're watching this. I hope it's just great for you. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.